Hello, everybody. I'm Franny Gady, the Head of Digital Scholarship Services at the University of Oregon, and it's my pleasure today to introduce Emily Rastovich, uh, who's a recent graduate of the University of Alabama's MLIS program, and she recently completed her capstone internship uh, with our department, and as part of that internship, um, she helped us develop um, training materials for the Spotlight platform. And so I thought it would be wonderful to have her here uh, today to kind of talk through the, the process of um, kind of digital exhibits and working with Spotlight and, and what that was like for her um, kind of coming to Spotlight as uh, with, with fresh eyes, as it were. So um, I don't, I'm not here to hear myself talk, so I want to go ahead and, and turn it over to Emily here. Thank um, you, Frank. Well, well Will you all be screen sharing? Uh, no, but I, I can, but I have some links that I can just put in the chat too, whichever you prefer. Oh, I see, no screen sharing today. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Okay, um, well as Franny said, I just, I finished my internship with the U of O and my internship focused on digital object lifecycle, um, but digital exhibits kind of took the starring role of that, um, just because that's kind of where my interests lie, both personally and professionally. Um, so at University of Oregon, Spotlight is used internally within the library. It's not publicly facing, but it's for internal exhibits. Um, so Digital Scholarship Services asked me to create Spotlight documentation and some training materials to give to their librarians and archivists, um, just to give them resources to be able to create their own digital exhibits. Um, since the University of Oregon doesn't offer digital exhibits as a service, but they help others, you know, learn how to create their own and walk them through the process. So. I started with a very bare bones how to instructions from Kate Thornhill to get me started learning Spotlight. Um, kind of bullet points, just, you know, how to, how to log in, how to, how to create a new exhibit, et cetera. Um, and so I expanded from there. So I created a manual, which I will, oops, I lost my uh, window. Okay, I'm gonna copy the link into the chat. So you can see that's the manual that I created um, for the University of Oregon. Um, so I just went through each step and made screenshots and was just trying to make it so if someone sat down and said, okay, I'm going to make a spotlight digital exhibit, they could start with page one and it would take them all the way through, you know, working within each of the little widgets um, that UO has in there. Um, I lost my spot in my notes. <laughs> um, oh, and so then after I finished that, little project. Um, I took that and then I turned it into a libguide, which is a little bit more, um, can sometimes be a little bit more accessible and easier um, than scrolling through a huge document. Um, but the libguide is pretty much, it has everything the manual has just in a more uh, user-friendly manner. They can either click through like they would the manual so they can go from start to finish or they can just go to a specific point and get their question answered. Um, after I did that, uh, they asked me to create a lesson plan for a training session, which I will also link in the Zoom. Oh, the OneDrive link. Okay. Um, I will, after I finish talking, I will try and put that into Google Drive and see um, if that works. Sorry about that. Um, so I created the lesson plan in a training session um, with some materials for the librarians and archivists at the University of Oregon, um, just as, as half to get some of them learning Spotlight and the other half to kind of refine the lesson plan because once you teach it, then you can kind of see, okay, here are the gaps. Here's, here's the knowledge that I maybe assumed that they don't have. Um, so it was really valuable for me, I think, as well as um, for them. And so I was able to get feedback on that lesson plan and refine it. And doing all of this work for univers un the University of Oregon, um, it really enhanced my internship experience. I wasn't expecting to get as much out of it as I did. Um, granted, I expected to get a lot <laughs> out of the internship, but um, I was able to work through this platform that I'd never worked through before with minimal direction. Um, I learned as I went. Um, I learned the program and then turned around and essentially taught it within the manual. Um, and I was able to identify some bugs as I went through, uh, especially with, um, you know, admin role, you can do some things and then curators, 
um, there was a few things that curators maybe should have been able to do and they couldn't. So I was able to kind of identify those things. Um, and then I was able to troubleshoot a little bit. Um, so when I met with a developer, I could show her, here's how it should work and here's how it's working and here's where the disconnect is. Um, and then I got some awesome experience teaching the platform to other librarians, which is valuable in itself. Um, and with the documentation and the libguide in the training session, there was the same goal um, to teach and to help people to use Spotlight, but it was just different uh, methods of doing it. It's all the same content, but just different delivery. Um, and the internship also gave me some really amazing tangible work samples that I could put on my CV website, which is going to help now that I've graduated. So that's what I have to say, and thank you very much. Are there um, other questions or Franny, did you have some other uh, comments that you wanted to add? And yeah, so, you know, I think one thing that was really important for us was to, you know, build up a culture within the library um, where kind of anybody within the library would be able to kind of pick up Spotlight as a tool to create digital exhibits and that this wasn't just something that the folks in university archives or in the digital scholarship services department um, would be using. And so having really accessible um, documentation was something that was gonna be important. And then I, I think the other thing, um, Emily, that um, I, I distinctly remember the conversation that we had where, where you said to me you know, that it was, that you loved working with Spotlight, that this was a tool, that it was, you know, it was distinctly different from other digital exhibit software that you'd worked with before, um, but that it was really easy to use. And I, I wonder if you want to talk about that a little bit and kind of that, that user experience journey that you had as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd had experience with uh, Omeka to begin with, um, but using Spotlight, even with the very kind of bare bones that I'd had, it was very intuitive for me. Um, it was very easy to use. Um, there was a lot of just, okay, click, that's that, and, and the workflow, even if I didn't have the manual, you know, if I just kind of had little bullet points of here's the things you need to check off, it was very simple and very easy, and, and um, there was one morning, um, it was right before the training session, and I thought, well, you know, I have a couple of spare hours before this, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make my own exhibit, and so it was within a couple hours, I put together this exhibit because it was just so simple to use. I, I loved it. <laughs> so Emily, how long was your, or was your internship there at, at Oregon? I was there for four weeks. For four weeks. And so you got all of this done in four weeks. Yes, I did. Well, good for you. Uh, Thank you. That, that is a nice manual uh, as well. Do certainly appreciate that. Do you mind if we, uh, put a link to it on our wiki. Oh, please do. Absolutely. Okay, great. Perfect. Perfect. We'll probably put the PDF or link to the PDF there since maybe, uh, or not everybody has, um, has one drive. So what was, uh, tell me again, the, what was your approach to putting together the, the guide? Uh, Emily, did, did you just kind of walk through the, through the software looking at what might be a question or, or yeah well I have um I've taught middle school for several years um and one of the things that I taught my middle schoolers I was a digital photography and yearbook teacher so I have some experience teaching photoshop and so I was able to draw on that experience where I don't assume that they know anything already um just because you want to be able to give people step by step. So I took it from the approach of, of that they know nothing. Um, you want to, I'd rather give them more information. I'd rather give them more screenshots, more steps to follow than assume any mental leaps. You know, I don't want to assume, oh, they click the save button. Of course they would. You know, not everybody's going to think that way. So I was um, very careful to give them very step by step instructions. So there would be no, um, no guesswork on their part when they were going through the guide. And also through the process, we were able to create probably almost two dozen tickets for our developer to help 
um, mostly on the user experience side to, you know, change the names of some buttons to just to kind of ease some of the flow of using Spotlight um, for folks or, or just, you know, every once in a while, like, oh, you know, you click something or you click a back button here and something blows up, right? And so we were able to um, just fix a few things by going through the system so thoroughly like that. Um, and so we're able to put in a lot of tickets that way. Um, just by, by going step by step through every feature that the system had to offer. So those tickets, Franny, um, those were for your local instance only, correct? Yes, yep. Um, but I'd be happy to share the, the GitHub. Yeah, I think we're just really, uh, we can, you know, we'll talk about this more later um, after we're done recording, but or, you know, Stanford doesn't own, own the instance. Mm -hmm. we, we, we created it. <laughs> or, I mean, we created the community application, but we're really hoping for, um, for contributions, um, you know, and PRs from the community. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so and, and of course, um, it would be great also to have a link to your GitHub repo. I've, uh, I've popped that into the chat along with, uh, I don't know if Emily had included the research guide uh, for Spotlight, but I've put that in there as well, as well as two posts that Emily's written for Hack Library School about the internship, um, which are fabulous and we're, we're super pleased for her. Yeah, thanks for those. Those, um, as a matter of fact, it was, um, I think Kate Thornhill's uh, tweet, she, she, um, called one or both of those to my attention um and it was really it was really exciting uh to read read what you've written and to hear about your experience emily thank you so much for publishing those oh thank you it was um it was kate actually who had encouraged me to do so um towards the end of my internship she wanted me to do a little reflective writing just on the experience and and what i had done um because i was one of the I don't think the, the first, but one of the, the first DSS interns there. Um, and so after I finished writing it, she said, you know, you should, you should look into publishing it. So we looked into a couple different avenues and I had reached out to Hack Library School and they loved it. And after a lot of editing, I, we decided to cut it into two posts um, just because they covered so much ground. I think what's really great about um, the experience that you had and the contrib contributions that you're now, you know, making back to this community is that we have a number of different community participants who have um, various different training approaches. Um, I think, um, is, it, is it Cornell that has done some interesting work? They have a guide. Um, also, uh, Vanessa, um, at Harvard, you all have you all have um, sort of tutorial or, or materials that are guiding people. I know that um, UC Santa Barbara for their for their Spotlight endeavor that's a collaboration with UC San Diego. Um, I actually exported Stanford's exhibit documentation exhibit, which is our exhibit on exhibits. I provided um, her with a JSON export. Uh, of that, that she is repurposing to use as a guide for them. So I love all of these different approaches and by contributing links to all of those materials on the, um, on our um, community wiki, um, people who come along behind us have lots of different things to choose from. And this is really, this is, this makes me really happy. <laughs> So I, I think it's great, and it's one of the things that we've pointed out in our implementation here at Texas A and M is that you know we have to do we have to do education, and if you're in the prod product using it on a regular basis, we find that people become very comfortable with it. It's when they do an exhibit and then they go away for six months and come back, it's like wow, I don't even remember how I did that. Uh, so being able to reference a guide that catches them up, I think it's going to come in incredibly handy. Nice job. Thank yeah. You. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just wanted to say, um, yeah, thanks, Emily, for the, the presentation. I might have missed this because I was reading your links as you were talking. 
But um, did you say if you had done any in-person trainings based on these, or is this more for people to go to and do on their own? I did do one training session. Um, so the lesson plan, I think I had put it into the chat, but I can put it in once more. Um, I put that together and then we kind of took it out for a little bit of a test drive with some other people from digital scholarship services. And one I believe was from uh, research and instruction. And so I was able to run, it was about two hours long, a training session where they each had their own sample training exhibit. And I could, you know, do a click through instruction step-by-step, step, show them how to do it and then give them time to do it on their own. And then I was available for questions to help them through any bugs that you know, maybe they had found. Um, and then they were also able to think through some other issues I hadn't thought of, um, such as when you import um, one single item, there's kind of the default metadata, title, description, date, attribution, um, but there was no like default rights statement. So that was something we were able to think through and think, oh, maybe we want, you know, we want that as a default uh, metadata field for an uploaded item. Um, and real quick as a credit, um, Kathy, to, to everyone else's instructional materials out there, I was trying to work through the, um, there is an upload multiple item portion and I, I was just lost. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I was, I was trying to click through and all this stuff and, and I was fell down the Google hole and I think it was probably Stanford's stuff. They had a little GIF of how it was supposed to run and I was like, oh, that's how it's supposed to work. So that was able to help me, you know, someone else's, uh, instructional materials was able to help me, um, create my own. So that was very helpful. Great to hear. Very good. Franny and Emily, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Um, and we look forward to seeing more. Uh, this gives us a platform to build on. And I, I think that's how communities get stronger. So thank you very much.